Hey guys, it's Mason with First and Finishing, and today we're talking about KV and Macaramps and their role in powder coating with some examples. So let's first start with the definition of both kilovolts and microamps. Kilovolts, also known as KV, represents 1000 volts. The KV used in powder coating is responsible for negatively charging the powder cloud. These negatively charged electrons are what carry the powder particles to the grounded part. Microamps, also known as UA, are one millionth of an ampere. So in other words, powder coating is very high voltage with very low current. These microamps are responsible for how effectively the powder particles get charged and stick to the grounded parts. So now that we know what KV and UA represent, let's talk about how they affect powder coating in the real world. So the use of this high voltage KV and low current microamps create this thing that we call the corona field. Now this corona field is what charges the particles, making them attract and adhere to the part. So there's a lot of examples where high KV and low KV versus high microamps versus low microamps are used in powder coating, so let's go over the basics. So a general rule of thumb is high KV and high microamps will allow the best possible transfer efficiency from the powder to your part with the least amount of overspray. Now you may ask yourself why would you not coat everything at these high KV and high microamps? The main reason why you would ever adjust these is due to back ionization by overcharging your part and Faraday cage effect. So by being able to adjust both KV and current, you're going to be able to coat a much wider variety of parts without running into these issues like the back ionization and Faraday cage effect. So Faraday areas on parts are the most common issue that powder coaters run into. And this happens when you're coating a part and you're just not able to get the powder to stick exactly where you want it. So here's an example of coating a part with a high KV and high microamp set point and a low KV and low microamp set point and the differences you'll see while coating. So here's our first test piece we're going to be doing. It's got quite a bit of Faraday areas all up in here on the inside of these barrels here, so I think this will be a good challenge for it. So we're going to be shooting this first piece at 100 kV and 100 microamps. Overall, it did coat very well. Um, a few light spots. It's kind of hard not to coat pretty decent on first coat. See on the top and bottom of these barrels here. On the insides of them, they're really not too bad. A um, little bit of a light spot there. Overall, really not that bad. Inside these. Overall, at 100 kV and 100 microamps, the part didn't do too bad. It had a few light spots here and there, but that's something to expect with our high outputs. So if you look at our part, you can see on this edge and this edge, it's really thick. It's kind of the crossover point from spraying this way and spraying this way. That's where it overlaps. And the part's really thick here due to the high microamps charging all that powder, making it stick. So now let's get this thing blown off and coated at the right settings. So here's that same test at 80 kV and 20 microamps with the same powder output. So here's the part with the 80 kV and 20 microamps. If you could tell by the video, it did take a little bit longer to coat. That's because less of that powder is getting charged at the lower microamps, uh, but it coated better. So if you can see here, there's absolutely no light spots throughout this whole part. Make sure everything stays in focus. Looks a lot better. No light spots at all. So now that we've seen the differences between high KV and high microamps versus low KV and low microamps, we're going to do the same test between first and second coat. So I'm going to spray some white on here, cure it, and do that same exact process I did the first time, but on the second coat. So here we are with the first coat on, now we're going to do the second coat at the high KV and high microamps. We're at 100 to 100, so let's see what happens. So you can see here's the settings I used and here's the outcome. As you can see, very little powder stuck, a lot of light spots, a lot of spots that just won't even touch. These big flat open areas, obviously it did better in here, um, 
but I mean very little coverage all in here. So now we're gonna go blow this off and redo it at probably this setting right here at 60 kV and 10 microamps. So we got the part blown off, we got it at the correct setting, so let's go ahead and code it. So as you guys saw, there was a huge difference. And again, we have a perfect finish. Everything's perfectly covered. No light spots all the way throughout, just by spraying at the correct KV and microamps. So now that you guys understand the impact that KV and microamps have as far as coverage on your part, let's talk about when and where you use certain settings. Now before we get into the recommended set points, remember everybody's entitled to their own opinion and their own experience. Some of your settings may differ than what we have here, but if you're still getting the job done, that's all good in our books. So to start off, we have three different part examples. We have a sign, a side-by-side, -side, and a complex wheel. I think this covers the basis for most parts. We have a simple, easy part, a somewhat complicated part, and then a really complex part, depending on what wheel you're doing. To start off with our first coat, we have 100 kV and 100 microamps for the sign. This allows for the best possible transfer efficiency and allows you to be able to coat the part at a much quicker pace than you were if you're at these two settings. Next, we have 80 kV and 20 microamps for the side-by-side -side frame. This is a good setting because on the simple round tube areas, you're going to be able to coat that at a high efficiency rate. And when you run into those welds and hard tight angles, this setting will be able to get you through it. Then we have 70 kV, 15 microamps for the complex wheel. This is a really good setting because you're going to get the powder and all those nooks and crannies that you need to without overcharging the part. The only downside is you're going to lose a lot of efficiency because you're going to be spraying a lot more powder to waste. Moving on to the second coat of the sign, you can see we keep the kV at 100 and we drop our microamps to 15. This way we can prevent overcharging the part but we could still spray at a good transfer and efficiency rate. Now moving on to the second coat for the side-by-side, -side, you can see we drop our KV10 and we drop our microamps by 10. Again, this is to prevent overcharging the part, but we're still gonna be able to get in all those nooks and crannies before. Now to our second coat on the complex wheel, we're at 60 KV and 10 microamps. This allows us to still be able to hit all the angles with good coverage on the wheel and prevent back ionization by having less than 10 microamps. For the third coat of the sign, it's going to be just like the second coat, except we drop the KV a little bit and the microamps. This way we could still be able to stack powder on the previous powder because it's slowly insulating itself, but you're still going to be able to spray at a high efficiency rate. For the third coat of the side-by-side, -side, you're going to be at 60 KV and 10 microamps. Again, we're just trying to prevent back ionization and overcharging, so the settings are going to be your best bet. And the same thing for the third coat with the complex wheel, you're going to be at 50 KV or less or 10 microamps or less. It really just depends how good your ground is, but you'll still be able to hit every spot and get good coverage like you could before. Just because you have your KV and microamps set at the correct set points does not mean your coating will always go great. Grounding, prep, and technique are all very important and play a vital role in getting your powder to stick where you want it. Also, if you guys don't know what settings to set your KV and microamps at, you can go lower than what you think. The main downside of doing this is you're going to have more overspray and waste more powder, but if it means you're able to coat the part that you couldn't before without sending it out, then what's it matter? So I think that wraps up today's video as far as KV and microamps. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to contact me or check out our website at firstandfinishing.net. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.